Welcome to week four of Digital Weekly. So glad you guys have tuned in to watch with us. I just wanted to share some good news with you that I read the other day. It's talking about the coronavirus and how the curve is starting to flatten. They're actually predicting that the peak here in Texas will be April 25th, which is good news because after the peak, it'll start to go down and maybe we'll start to return to normal. So remember the social distancing, the staying at home, it's working. They actually had some predictions a couple months, about a month ago of how many people would be infected and how many fatalities would be. And now they're saying that those predictions are going to be way lower because of the steps you're taking. Uh, remember, you're not stuck at home, you're safe at home. If you're not uh, following us on Remind, I would encourage you to subscribe to that. You can text at F-B-C-B-E-L-T. You text that to the number 81010. And you can get updates and reminders of things that are going on throughout the week. Uh, one of the things we do on Wednesday nights is called Youth Group at Home. Uh, we play some games, we fellowship, we do some singing together, we watch a video and have some discussion groups. Uh, we had one last week and we did a Western theme and Ashton Kelly was our winner. He did a great job that he wrote in on his stick horse. Uh, this week we'll be talking, uh, or we'll be actually having an 80s theme. So you want to go and raid some of your parents' closets, uh, come dressed in your best 80s theme. We'll be giving away a gift card for that. Um, that will actually start at 7 o'clock, but we'll open up the, the uh, Zoom room at 6.30 so you can just hang out catch up with your friends, talk. So if you want to come and be a part of that, I encourage you to be there. I think our last group finished this past week at 9.30. I think that was some high school girls they were just visiting. Um, remember, Life Groups is on Sundays. We'll send out the times and the rooms for that. Uh, and also, I just want to take a moment to give a special thanks to some of y'all. Uh, Paul Vassar has been editing our videos for our YouTube channel. Uh, Digital Weekly. He's been doing our two-minute testimonies. He's doing a great job. I'd appreciate that. Thanks to Colin and Kate Elkins who've been recording <clears throat> recording our worship times for Wednesday nights. And then many of you have been making two-minute testimonies. You've been making other videos for our YouTube channel. Thank you for taking the time to do that. You're doing a great job of also ministering to one another. I hear lots of stories. You're calling in. You're texting one another. You're checking one another keep doing that. We need to maintain these connections in this community and we need to help each other out through this time. With that being said, it's now time for Corona Time with Colin. Hey guys and welcome back to Corona Time with Colin. Uh, before we begin, I'm going to make a huge shout out to last week's challenge winner, which is Bethany Fitzwater. Um, so she will be receiving a gift card uh, sometime this week. Uh, she had the most likes on her trick shot video uh, on Saturday. So if you haven't already, go ahead and check that out. It's pretty cool. Um, and this week, the challenge is going to be based on food, specifically cooking. Um, so whether that be a dessert or a meal or just a snack, um, send me a picture over text or email of something that y'all have made in the kitchen this week. Um, include the main ingredients, the name of the thing you created, and any other facts that you want people to know about that. And this week's challenge will be submitted on our Instagram page. Um, so if you haven't, go ahead and follow our Instagram page. It is underscore FBC youth underscore no caps. Um, and whoever has the most likes on their cooking creation picture um, by Saturday at noon will be this week's Corona Time with Colin winner. Um, I hope y'all are doing well. Again, I really miss y'all and um, I'll catch y'all later. Thanks, Colin. I really enjoyed watching some of your trick shots this week, guys. Uh, keep putting in your submissions. Keep participating in the Corona Time with Colin. Share it with your friends. I look forward to seeing what kind of things you uh, make this week or bake. Um, probably make me really hungry. Uh, before we kind of talk about our spiritual challenge for this week, I want to just check in with you and give you a little checkup. I want to ask you, how are you doing spiritually? Um, we kind of live in a new and different time. And I think a lot of us have extra time on our hands. 
but I don't know if we're all using that time as efficiently as we can. I don't know if we're using that time to grow in our faith. I know if you're like me, there are days that I wake up and go, hey, I'm going to really spend some extra time reading about God and spending time with Him. But the day kind of gets away with me and I get to the end of the day and I really just didn't get accomplished what I desired. And so even though you have this extra time in your life, you have to be intentional about spending time with God. Because if you don't, your relationship with Him can go from being something that's vibrant and healthy to something that's almost dead, something that's surviving on life support. And we don't want you to be like that. We want you to be growing in your relationship. You have to take care of your spiritual life. You have to be intentional, intentional about making time to be with God. He has to be a priority for you. And that's why we've been giving you spiritual challenges through Digital Weekly. It's why we do life groups. It's why we post things on Facebook just to encourage you and to keep you focused on growing in your relationship. So I know you're busy. I know life is crazy. But make spending time with Christ a priority. Last week, we gave you a challenge, and that challenge was to live life in the knowledge and truth of restoration. We talked about an illustration about how people will go into an old home that's kind of broken down, it needs to be fixed up, and when they go into that home, they look at the potential that that house has to be, of what it was intended to be, and they think about how can we fix it, how can we make it new? Well, our challenge was to live knowing that God wants to do the same thing for me and for you. Now, he's trying to restore us to our intended purpose. He wants to make our life new so that we can serve him. We talked about how to do that. And one of the ways we talked about doing that was humbling ourselves and trusting God. So many times we don't allow God to restore us because we're a little bit afraid of what that process will look like. Or well, we're afraid that God doesn't understand how it really messed up we are. Well, he does. We can trust him. And so we have to humble ourselves and say, God, do whatever you need to do. The other way that we are restored is by resisting the temptations of the devil. The devil says, hey, just live in this life. Just enjoy it. Don't worry about being restored. And we stay this old, broken down shell of a person of what we really can be. We, we never really become what God intended us to be. So we challenge you to live in that hope that God is restoring you to the original creation he wanted you to be. So our challenge this week, I want you to think about in terms of Easter. We just finished celebrating the death and the burial and resurrection of Jesus. And, and what a celebration that is. Through Jesus, are we capable of having this new life, this new restored relationship with Jesus? So I ask you that question, how should you live? The spiritual challenge for you this week is going to live a life of submission. Yeah, that's probably not your favorite word. It's probably a word that you think is not a lot of fun. It kind of feels like you're being defeated. But Christ gave us a great example of submission through his death on the cross. And he even said something about submission when he was on that cross in Matthew 27, 50. It says this, And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice, and he yielded up his spirit. Another word for yielded could have been submitted his spirit. Or another version says he gave up. His spirit. You see, what Jesus was saying was, this is a voluntary act. As the Son of God, he could have easily healed himself. He had the power to get off of that cross. But what he says in this verse is that he chose to die on that cross. He chose to give up his life for me and for you. He endured that cross. He paid the price for our sins, that price being death. He didn't know it. He was sinless, but he paid it for us. He chose to submit his life. He chose to be that sacrifice so that you and I could have a restored relationship with Christ. And we should live like Jesus. 
Jesus had spoken about this choice he was going to make to give up his life. And you can find that in John 10. If you have your Bibles, turn there. We're going to look at two verses today. John 10, verses 17 through 18. Here's what the verses say. For this reason, the Father loves me. Because I lay down my life that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. This charge I have received from my Father. So what can we learn from these verses about Jesus and submission? Well, you see it there in the first verse. It says, I lay down my life. Jesus is saying, I'm choosing to do this. I have all the authority to do whatever I want as the Son of God. But as the Son of Man, I'm going to choose to lay it down for God's creation. Verse 18, look what it says. I do it of my own accord. No one takes it from me. He has all the control. And in that control, he chooses to make that sacrifice. And so he gives us this example and says, hey, you're supposed to live like me. You're supposed to daily choose to submit your life. When Jesus submitted on the cross, he was submitting to the will of his Father and setting an example for us to daily submit to Christ. So why did Christ do that? Why did he submit his life? Well, it's right there in verse 17. It says, For this reason, the Father loves me. Those little words, the Father loves me, are so powerful. And you can look at them from two different perspectives. The first perspective is that Jesus laid down his life because he loved the Father. He would be obedient to the Father because the Father loved him. And he desired the Father's love. And that's the way we should live. We should desire the Father's love. And because of that love, we should submit to him. Think about all the ways that God has provided for you, that he has loved you. Uh, The most important one being his son's death on a cross. God is the one who created that plan so that you might be restored, so you might be made whole so that you might experience a relationship with him so the first way you can look at that is that we're obedient because the father loves us the second way that you can look at those words is that we can be obedient because of the father's love jesus knew that when he was make this choice and that he would lay down his life that god would be with him in that that god's love would provide the strength and the peace God's love would provide everything Jesus needed to get through this time in his life so that he could fulfill God's plan. You see, God loves us. And in loving us, he not only gives us a plan for our life, but he gives us the tools, he gives us the resources to succeed in this life. Look what else it says about the submission. Not only did Jesus lay down his life, but he was able to take it up again. See it there in verse 18? It says, I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. And the reason Jesus had that authority is because the the penalty for sin was death for you and for me. And because we are not perfect, because we are not without sin, we can't take up our life again like Jesus. But Jesus being sinless is not subject to that same penalty. You see, he paid that price for you and me. But his sinless perfection protected him from death. He had power over death because he was the Son of God and because he lived a sinless life. So you and I, when we lay down our life, when we entrust it to Christ, we're able to pick it up again because of that same power. That power that Jesus has over death. And I believe many of you, if I were to ask you, hey, do you think this lifestyle is something you should be doing? Should you live in submission to God? 
you would say, yes, I, I want to do that. I want to lay down my life. I want to choose Jesus every day. But it's hard. You struggle to do it, and you're not really even sure why. You want to follow Christ, but it's just difficult. Well, if you look back at John 10, 17, I think you can see two reasons that we struggle. And it goes back to those words about the Father's love. Remember the verse says, For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life that I may take it up again. I think the two reasons that we struggle is fear of the unknown and fear of the known. Yeah, this verse doesn't talk about fear or conquering our fears, but it does talk about the Father's love. You see, Jesus was able to lay down his life because he knew the Father's love. He had spent time with the Father. He had prayed with the Father. Many times in the New Testament, it talks about how Jesus would get away to spend time with with the Father in prayer. Uh, In the Garden of Gethsemane, right before the crucifixion, he's spending time with the Father. There's evidence in Jesus' life, the miracles that he performed, that he spent time with the Father. Jesus and God the Father were one. And Jesus trusted the Father because of that relationship they had. There was no unknown between Jesus and the Father because he had spent time with the Father. And so I think our fear of the unknown is the fact that we don't truly know God. We're not one with him. We don't have an intimate and personal relationship with Jesus because we spend a little bit of time, but we don't spend a lot of time. And when we spend that time with him, we don't always give it our best. We don't give it our full attention. We don't know his love because we struggle to have this consistent time with him, learning from him, listening to God, talking to God. We don't really invest in this relationship as it's the most important thing in our life. Now, I don't doubt for a second that many of you spend time praying, you spend time reading God's word, you memorize scripture, but do you invest in it as if it is the most important thing in your life? I don't think we do because I think we fear that unknown. We fear what that relationship really is. But God's Word tells us what that relationship is. And it tells us that it is well worth any price that we would pay. Our fear of the known comes from when we grow in our relationship and we understand what Jesus is truly asking of us as disciples. If you look at what it says in Scripture to follow Jesus, you'll admit that it's costly and that it's difficult. You have to lay down your life. You have to take up the cross, and you have to follow Jesus. And when you do that, it's not all sunshine and rainbows. It can be very difficult. Jesus calls us to be all in. I don't know about you, but that's scary. If I live that way, if I give Jesus everything, control over all of my decisions, then who's going to take care of all the other things that the world deems important? What about school and money and a job and a family? If I trust all of those to Jesus, it makes me nervous. You see, Jesus didn't fear the known. He knew the price he was going to have to pay by dying on the cross. He didn't fear the known because he knew about the Father's love. He knew that in suffering, in trials, and difficulties that come in your life and my life, that came in the life of Jesus, he knew that the Father would provide everything he needed so that he'd not only survive, but he could succeed. Jesus knew that even though it would be so painful to die on the cross and to take on the sin of all man, he knew that eventually the Father would restore him to his right hand. So my challenge to you this week as you attempt 
to submit to Jesus is to not live in fear of the unknown or to live in fear of the known, but to grow in your relationship with Christ in such a way that you trust him. As you work on living in submission, don't focus on submitting, but rather focus on knowing God and trusting God the same way Jesus did. Because when you know him, when you understand the love he has for you, then trusting him will be easy. And then you'll begin to desire to live in submission. Let me pray for you. Father, we thank you so much for your son who died on the cross and paid a price that we couldn't pay. And he paid it because he loved you and he trusted you. And now he has called us to live our lives in submission. So I pray that these students that are listening today would know you in such a way that they desire to give you everything. They desire to submit to you in all things. Lord, we love you and we thank you for all the blessings in our life. It's your name we pray. Amen. Hey, thank you guys for being here this week. I hope you have a great week. I hope you continue to grow in your faith. Uh, we'll see you next week.